everyone. So we have another video from WrestleMania. This one talking about 10 WWE matches where the wrong person won. Now, look, we've all had matches where, or we've all seen matches in the WWE where we wanted a certain someone to win. And, you know, when they don't win, it's, it's really disappointing, but usually you can think about it and you realize that, okay, well, I can understand why they had him win here. You know, maybe they're going to have them lose at some point in the future because they want to keep the storyline going for a bit longer. But there are some times where you feel like, okay, this person should have won here. Okay, like even if they win after that, it's not going to matter because this is where they should have won. This is where you should have done it. And when they lost, it just, it severely affects whatever it is that they have planned. And it's just, it's not going to have the same outcome like it's not going to have the same effect on people as it would have if you had just done it when you should have done it so let's go ahead and watch this video and deciding who oh and as, as always guys links in the description wins a wrestling match is ultimately the most important aspect of pro wrestling booking who wins and who loses decides the future direction of storylines and it can impact the future of the entire company Unfortunately, from time to time, major wrestling companies such as WWE get this a very, very wrong. Well, which times were they? Mm -hmm. Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE matches where the wrong person won. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number 10, CM Punk vs Triple H. In the summer of 2011, yep. CM Punk yeah, ascended to the one. very top of the a WWE. Of Following his acclaimed pipe bomb promo, Punk had received widespread attention, and as a result, he was the most popular star in WWE at the time. But following his WWE title loss at the hands of Alberta Del Rio at SummerSlam, they decided to book Punk in a match against Triple H at the Night of Champions pay-per-view. This was a strange match to book because both men were babyfaces, and it was unclear who the audience was going to root for. Fans had presumed that Punk would win as he was a very much younger star and Triple H didn't need the victory after all. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, Triple H being Triple H, this didn't yeah. happen. Punk lost to Triple H and this seriously damaged Punk's positive momentum. Punk would obviously hold a grudge against WWE for a number of years due to the outcome of this match and he would even cite this match as one of the reasons he disliked Triple H in a personal capacity. Number 9, Randy Orton vs Hulk Hogan. The match between Randy Orton and Hulk Hogan at SummerSlam 2006 would act as Hogan's last WWE match to date. The logical thing to do if this was going to be Hogan's last WWE mm -hmm. match was to put the younger star over in a convincing manner, passing on the torch forever. Yeah, see, this is, I think we talked about this in the previous video, but this is one of the problems when you have with, with someone like Hulk Hogan, which is that they just have problems putting other people over because they just... I don't know why. I mean, maybe they just want the glory. They don't want to make themselves look bad, whatever. <sighs> yeah, this was... Randy definitely should have won this match. Like they said, like Hulk Hogan should have put Randy over in this match. But instead, Hogan would defeat Orton clean, and following the match, Hogan would then disappear from television whilst WWE was left to rebuild Orton's credibility. Now, this booking decision could have been forgiven if Orton got his win back, but this simply never happened. It was another example of Hogan going over in a match that he didn't need to win. Was purely for his ego. Mm -hmm. Number 8, Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal. When WWE announced a Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal for the 25th anniversary of WrestleMania in 2009, it created a massive opportunity to showcase women from the past, present, and future of WWE. In the match were the likes of Victoria, Beth Phoenix, Sonny, Mickey James, Molly Holly, and the Bella Twins. Now, although these well known and popular superstars were in the match, WWE decided to award the match to. Santina Marella. Yeah. Now, Santina was supposed to be Santina Marella's twin sister, but it was just Santino in a terrible drag. WWE opted for shock value for the match outcome and it flopped dramatically. It was terrible, senseless, and was completely disrespectful to all the women I in the match. Number seven, Shane okay. McMahon versus the I still remember that, like what the heck? Oh boy. Miz. Now, the Miz's babyface turn in 2019 was seen as a long time coming for WWE fans. The Miz had managed to build a genuine connection with the fan base, and it was clear that a face turn was needed for the former WWE champion. Unfortunately, this face turn was a total failure. The Miz's arch rival during this babyface run would be his former tag partner Shane McMahon. 
the issue was that Shane got the better of The Miz in seemingly every match, so much so that it killed The Miz's credibility as a legitimate babyface. Now, this would begin at WrestleMania 35 as Shane would defeat The Miz, but the follow-up victory never occurred. Shane would defeat The Miz a further two times, and as a result, The Miz's time as a compelling babyface character was on borrowed time. Number 6, Charlotte Flair vs. Asuka. I one of the most yeah, acclaimed matches of WrestleMania 34 was the match between Charlotte Flair and Asuka for the SmackDown Women's title. The match resulted in Charlotte shockingly ending the unbeaten streak of Asuka, and this truly took fans by surprise. They should have had Asuka either. win the SmackDown Women's title and allowed the feud to continue. Now, although the match was excellent, the result of the match had serious long-term damage. Mm -hmm. Asuka would struggle to rebuild credibility and her momentum. She would spend the summer of 2018 in an infamous feud with Carmella, which saw her lose to the former Money in the Bank holder on a number awful. of occasions. But the worst thing was that Asuka never got a clean victory over Charlotte. The two would wrestle a number of times throughout the years following WrestleMania 34, and every time it happened, Charlotte seemed to come out victorious. Number five. I, I, I still don't understand why they did this. I don't understand why WWE just like they take characters who have this like great momentum going. And they just completely kill it. Like Asuka, it's like they, it's like you said. Like Asuka was on a roll for a long time, and then once that match happened, it just it all went away. Like it never went back. And like Asuka was just never the same after that. Sting versus Triple H. When Sting finally joined the WWE, there were a number of dream matches that fans had in mind for the former WCW and TNA World Champion. One of these was The Undertaker, who fans had hoped to face Sting at WrestleMania 31. However, WWE had other plans. They wanted Sting vs Triple H as they believed that Triple H would be the perfect opponent for him. But when the match went down at WrestleMania 31, it featured cameos from NWO and DX, and it was abundantly clear that this was a WWE vs WCW storyline rather than a showcase for Sting. Sting ultimately lost to Triple H in a move that nobody saw coming. Fans were under the impression as this was so Sting's first ever stupid. WWE match that he would be victorious, but Vince McMahon insisted that Triple H would be the winner of the match. Over six years after the match took place, fans still question why this happened. Some fans believe that Vince, who didn't want to let Sting, who was an established WCW talent, defeat one of the WWE's biggest stars, and if this is indeed the case, it's rather short-sighted of the WWE chairman. Mm -hmm. Number 4 Brock Lesnar vs John Cena A Brock Lesnar's WWE oh, yeah, return in 2012 was back. a huge deal. Lesnar had returned to the WWE as a legitimate successful UFC fighter and as a result this was a completely different Lesnar which departed the WWE back in 2004. Lesnar's first match back in the company would be an Extreme Rules match against WWE's top star John Cena. And for seemingly no reason they decided to have Cena win the match against Lesnar. This was a terrible move on behalf of WWE, and it managed to make Lesnar extremely weak as a result. Mm -hmm. To make things worse, Cena in later months would claim that 2012 was the worst year of his career, even though he had defeated Lesnar in the main event of a pay-per-view. It was truly terrible booking on behalf of WWE. And Number then... 3, The Nexus vs Team WWE. Now the Nexus story... Uh, what's funny is that Lesnar would later on come back and just completely squash John Cena. And, you know, win the uh, WWE World Heavyweight Championship, both of them. And then, obviously, we would have another rematch. Uh, Cena, I think, did a lot better in that match, but he still ended up losing. And then L Lesnar would just go on to just hold the title for a long time before. I mean, I, I can't remember. Like, oh, yeah, I think he lost it to, like, uh, Rollins. or Then he got, quote-unquote, suspended. And then he came back, and then... They started that whole feud with The Undertaker that ended in a Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Storyline dominated. Just, uh, like, yeah, Lesnar definitely should have won. I mean, the guy just came back. Like, they should have spent time building up his momentum as, you know, the guy who came back after going to the UFC. And then maybe later on you want to have someone beat him, whether it's Cena or someone else, fine. But you should not have had him lose in literally the first match that he was in when he came back. WWE programming in 2010. The group consisted of seven WWE rookies who were attempting to take over the WWE. The storyline would culminate at the SummerSlam pay-per-view, where WWE booked the Nexus to take on seven top WWE superstars. Now, the initial planned finish to the match was for the Nexus to be victorious, as fans as well as a number of talents involved in the actual match, such as Edge and Chris Jericho, believed that this was the correct booking decision. But one of the superstars involved in the match who disagreed was John Cena. 
Cena influenced WWE to change the finish of the match in order for Team WWE, in particular Cena himself, to stand tall. This match finish was universally slammed by fans and it was mm -hmm. responsible for the downfall of the Nexus group. Though Cena in recent years has been rather public in the fact that this was the wrong decision and that the Nexus should have indeed won the match. Number 2 yeah, Triple H vs Booker T oh, One yeah. of the top matches on the WrestleMania 19 match card was Triple H defending the world title against Booker T. The storyline going into the match was rather controversial and had some rather inappropriate racial undertones involved. Mm -hmm. Due to the nature of the storyline, Booker T should have without a doubt won the match in a feel-good moment. However, WWE had other ideas. Triple H would win the match and he would even take an extended amount of time before making the final cover. It was a strange booking decision and Booker T should have conquered the villainous world champion even if it only led to a transitional reign for the former WCW champion. And number one, Royal Rumble 2014. Oh. The 2014 Royal Rumble match is considered by many to be one of the worst Rumble matches of all time. The reason for this was going into the match, there was a strong desire from the WWE audience to see fan favorite Daniel mm -hmm. Bryan win they the match and headline again. WrestleMania. However, WWE wanted the returning Batista to win the match, something fans didn't want. Throughout the 2014 Royal Rumble match itself, fans anticipated Bryan coming out but when it got to number 30 and Bryan hadn't appeared, fans completely turned on it. The Rumble match turned into a complete disaster and superstars such as Rey Mysterio, who were traditionally beloved, were heavily booed. Yeah, Batista it's... winning the match received unanimous backlash from both fans in attendance as well as fans and legends watching at home. The fallout from Batista's victory was so severe that they were forced to change their WrestleMania plans. This combined with the departure of CM Punk finally led to Bryan being added into the WrestleMania 30 main event, the match that he should have been already a part of. But there you have it, folks. T oh, yeah, I mean, look. I, I think I said this before, but some, like, it, it always baffles me some of the decisions made by, you know, Vince behind the scenes. And I just, I, I always wonder, like, you know, he... Like, he really needs someone backstage to tell him. I don't know if he does. Like, let me know in the comments if he does. But he, I think he needs someone backstage to tell him that, you know, some of the, like, when he's about to make a decision to tell him whether or not it's a good idea or not. And, you know, maybe offer up, like, a, um, a, different, a different option that maybe Vince didn't even think of. Because, for example, some of, the, some of these decisions are just, like, they are... You would think that anyone would be able to tell that these are not good decisions. Like, again, I brought up the... Uh, where is it? I brought up the Charlotte Flair versus Oscar thing. I mean, yes, Oscar definitely should have won and kept the feud going for a little bit. Maybe like a couple more matches where Oscar would come out, you know, the the victor, and then culminating in one match, where you know the last match between Charlotte and Oscar, where you could have Charlotte win, and Oscar, you could have her like end the uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 streak she was on. And then, granted, don't continue to make her look bad. Like, actually have her still look as good as you had her look before. But, unfortunately, it's like that's not what happened. Asuka lost. And then whatever momentum she had just completely went away. And they did not make her look good at all. And the idea of never having Asuka, like, get a victory over Charlotte, I, I never understood that. Or at least not a clean victory, if I remember correctly. Like, I, I never understood that. Like, how did you go from making her look like one of the most formidable opponents in the ring to just looking completely weak and it's just like something like that always confuses me and it's just yeah like they 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 not only did it with Asuka but they also did it with the Miz just completely ruining whatever momentum any of these wrestlers have but anyway guys those are my thoughts let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below remember as always leave a like share subscribe make sure to hit the bell for notifications and I hope I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.